Hello, hopefully, hopefully we are finally here after half an hour of messing around. Someone let me know in the chat if you can hear me now. That would be, be really useful. I'm watching myself on my iPad over there and I think it's live, but if someone else other than me, so I don't spend an hour talking to myself, which I might do anyway, and hopefully we are all up and running. Hey, oh, I think, I think that's it. So thank you for your patience, everyone. It was a bit of a nightmare. My Mac, it's not even that old. It's a 20, 2019 Mac. And then when it, runs out, when it runs out of memory, it just, everything freezes and then it crashes and it takes so long to get everything going again. It's just taken me half an hour to reboot and then start up all the programs one by one. So thank you for those of you who hung around. Um, and thank you for joining tonight. Um, so hello everyone, so hello John, Steve, Fernando, um, Rath Ruin, Rambo, I'm not gonna go through and read all these, That's someone on another very good stream does that. So let me talk a little bit about what the plans are gonna be for the Miniature Realms Irregular Ramble. So there's a clue in the title, Irregular and Ramble, and those of you who know me and, and, and watch my videos on I can go off on one, so this will be the ideal place for that. Uh, and, and I think what's going to happen for, for each stream, um, I will pick a topic and that will be the main thing. We can talk about that. I will, so you can join in in the chat. I'll do some painting um, quite often. Sometimes I will talk about a little bit of news or something. At the moment, um, my partner in crime for the Hobby Hour, Dan, is away overseas working. So we won't get a show out till pretty close to the end of this month. So I haven't been able to talk about any new news and things. So I may use the opportunity. In fact, I've got a couple of things lined up that I want to talk about and you guys can join in with that. Um, and then the main topic is, is about panic painting an army, mainly because I've got a whole army to paint. Um, ready for the end of the month. I know I'm not the only one doing that, Rafa Ruin, who's in the chat now. I know that he's painting a whole um, Toon King's army this month as well. So this, it's, it's, it's on theme. Um, and, and over on my painted desk over here, I will show you what I've got to paint um, that I have here. The rest of it's not even been shipped from, from GW yet because it's not out till the shipping date's not the 16th for those footnights and things. But anyway, so I thought we'd start a little bit with some news I wanted to talk about and you have to forgive me while I get used to the software and, and play around with what I can see and what you can see um, but if I flick over now and already lost the window that I need um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the new releases that were announced at the weekend um, and you guys can uh, let me know what you think I'll be, anyway, I've started my own stream on my phone accidentally, so I can still see the chat. Right, so the first one is these lovely gnomes for Blood Bowl. I don't know what you guys think, but I just thought they were absolutely amazing. Really, really cool, really, really good fun. Um, and there's no way I'm not going to be able to buy these. They're just um, far too awesome. Um, they're probably going to be awful in the game, just like playing Halflings or something like that but really, really, really cool. So uh, be really interested to know what, what you guys uh, what, what you guys think of those. But there's obviously been loads and loads of memes to do with the goose. And we have a little fox as well. Um, yeah, I just, I just think they are absolutely amazing. I'm gonna have to find some way of getting the stream back. So when I'm sharing this page with you, um, I can't see the chat because I've not popped that separate window out on OBS and if I do I risk crashing everything again and I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to go back to my stream I'm going to turn my volume down this time so I'm not playing myself twice but um, I just think these look really really cool um, and the plan is this year to play quite a lot of Blood Bowl with my, my wife which is the only game, miniatures game she'll play with me, she loves ball games and things but she, she will play Blood Bowl and she just plays it as a like a sport reenactment, I suppose, and, and, and usually beats me with her Skaven. So um, I think that will be part of it. Um, but also when I play my son, who's only nine, he's probably going to struggle a little bit. So playing a team like this or Halflings might be a good way of doing a little bit of natural balancing in those games. I'm going to have no hope against the wife with her Skaven, but... Uh, um, what do you what do you guys think of this? And I just think they're really really cool. I'm not gonna not gonna stick on those too long, but I just thought they were a bit of fun. And then even more interesting, definitely with um, 
old world at the moment, which is obviously one of my main focus, is the Dark Oath set that uh, looks like it's coming. Well, it's going to come in the next few months, isn't it? So for me, these are just Chaos Marauders. So if you're of a certain age and you, and you like fantasy, these are just absolutely fantastic. And uh, I've got the uh, Dark Oath Warcry Warband sitting in a box behind me over there. And I love the miniatures, but the, well, that won't work so much in fantasy. But these guys are just brilliant. And I think you get 20 in the box. 20 of these guys and you get five what would be Marauder Horsemen. I'm going to talk in old world money. Um, and you get the, the guy on the, the, the leader guy on the horse, which I don't know what you would use him as. Maybe you could use him as a, as a Chaos Champion or something like that. I'd be tempted just to mount him up as a sixth Marauder Horseman. But I did some playing around with some, some lists on Old World Bidder on my phone the other night. And it worked out that if you got this and a couple of the Vanguard Slaves to Darkness sets, um, you can get to 2,000 points very, very easily. And for, <laughs> this is not cheap, but probably for around the 300 pounds mark, which is cheap in GW money, um, you could have a, an old world army um, for, for Chaos and, uh, and be, all be these really nice new models because you're looking at the new Slaves to Darkness miniatures as well. Good evening to everyone joining now. Right, let's have a look at these. So if you haven't seen these guys, there is a bigger set, but I worked out the little list based on getting two sets of this. Um, so you're using both chariots, one as standard, one as a, a, a gore beast, and then you've got your knights, so you end up having ten knights. Um, I think I'd do nine knights and then convert one using this guy as a, your champion, um, as your general, on a, just on a, on a normal um, horse or something like that. Um, but it's just really simple list, marauders and uh, chaos warriors, a couple of chariots. Um, no big dragon, it's really hard to get it all in 2,000 points if you go for the big Kili dragon and things. But anyway, a very, really cool um, project that I'm trying to tell myself that I don't need to do, but these are just so, so cool. Um, I really want to get them and paint them. But I've got so much to do, so much to do, which I suppose brings us back to more the, uh, the topic of tonight's, uh, tonight's show, really. What we do is, is about how you get around painting big projects when you're under time pressure. Um, I have a lot of work painting wise, so I have a lot of practice doing big army projects and getting them done. So I know that I can paint stuff. It's, it's about balancing time and focus and not wasting time for me. But I'd be really interested in what you guys do to, to complete an army when you uh, have got a limited amount of time. Um, do you set yourself goals? Um, do you find the, the short space of time to do something? Maybe you've got an event in a couple of weeks, you're doing stuff the night before, do you find that that focuses you and that means you get them done? Because right now I've got no idea where I'm going to get what I need done, done. Um, it'd be interesting to uh, sort of find out from, from you or what you do um, and what methods you have. Um, to realize, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap over to my painting cam and I'll show you what I've got to paint and also, um, hopefully you can all still heal me as I moved over. Um, talk about my list and things and what I've got to paint and, uh, and then look at some comments a bit more because it's a little bit easier to see um, when I'm over at my painting desk. I can see what you're doing. Um, so we look at the chat at the moment. <laughs> yeah, those Dark Oath minis are definitely really, really, really nice. Yeah, and... and Using Barbarian Star and Dark Oath, Kings of War, yeah. John, procrastinate with little projects until you're up against it then, yeah. And then Rath and Ruin, who's doing his massive project at the moment, I tend to, to paint the basic tabletop standard, the whole army is painted, then go back over at the end. I know John mentioned that, because I talked about this in my um, patron-only sort of hobby diary I do, I know John mentioned that as one of his sort of solutions for me, and I'm awful with it really. I've got myself to a stage now where <clears throat> I want stuff to look like it does when it's fully finished. So I can't paint, and it's, it's ridiculous. At home I will play with them like this. I will play with them um, unpainted with my son. But as soon as I go anywhere else I have to be fully painted, which I'm, I'm not a painting uh, I'm gatekeeper with that. I don't mind people being unpainted. 
it really doesn't bother me at all. But for me, I want them, I want them painted, and I'm going up to Warhammer World to play as well. You know, I do painting for a living. I've got a channel that I talk about painting. I think it'd be embarrassing if I turn up with stuff completely unpainted. Now, this is all the stuff I've got to paint. I can't even get it all in shot. This guy's not even primed. So I've got my um, Peg Lord. I've got my Men at Arms. I've got Bowman. I have these guys that I've just made. Some Border Princess Brigands, all apart from the uh, the leader, all with blunderbusses. That'd be fun to protect some uh, artillery or to go and you can infiltrate I think and go and go up the board and maybe take out something else. Damsel, I've got my outcast wizard, she's got to be done as well. Um, I've got two blocks of knights here, so I've got standard knights of the realm, you can see I've got two painted. Um, knights errant as well, um, I've got to get them all done. It's just, it just loads. My giant here as well, so I don't have to get my giant painted, but he is a unit filler as well as a giant, so the plan is when I use them as um, standard men-at-arms, I'll have them like this, and then for my Exiles army, when I'm not running the Grand Army list, to uh, make sure I move them in right, I'll try to crush them, he's going to sit in there like that. just thought it'd be a, a cool, fun little thing to... Uh, see what he's you know just to make the unit look a little bit different um so he's gonna be fun to paint and he will be if everything goes to plan he will be a painting tutorial at some point this month and then on the list of stuff that is not even here i've got 20 foot knights to paint when they arrive um and then six questing knights as well um which will be part of that my my exiles list and i think i ran a list that's 2,000 points, but I've got a couple of hundred points to sort out with my magical items, yeah. So, yeah, loads and loads to do. Um, if I was painting it as a commission, it'd be no problem at all, but because I've got to squeeze it into my own time, um, that's where it becomes a pain. Um, so that's part of one of the reasons I'm doing these, because I can, which is what I'm going to do now, rather than just talking to you guys, is, is put some paint on some miniatures. And I won't spend a, a lot, I won't get a lot done because I'm talking and I'm playing around, but it's better than nothing. But I, I get a couple of free evenings a week to do whatever I want with, and I tend to spend it making videos, and there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy that. That's a healthy thing to do, and I'm not going to start making videos. But uh, as I said to the patrons in my patron only chat, is I, <laughs> I, I, I focus on the videos over doing my own hobby. It is my own hobby, I suppose. It is my own hobby, and I'm not going to stop doing that. But what you see painted on in, in videos on the channel, definitely this year, is the entirety of what I've painted. So there's nothing else going on behind the scenes. I've built stuff, you know, I've built those brigands and things, but I'm, I'm not doing a lot else. So it's about changing that up, really, and, and trying to find a solution for it. So I'm going to try and read some of your comments now. So... Uh, do, 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 do. So Wrath and Ruin, Pals trying to tempt you with Blood Bowl, or Blood Bowl, that doesn't sound very healthy, um, Wrath and Ruin, that sounds like something you need to get the doctor to check. Um, yeah. Trying to make basic tabletop standard, once the army's painted, that, you know, you, your sensible, sensible comments, and this is exactly what I should be trying to do, um, but I won't. Um, and what else have we got here? Um, Define fully painted. Yeah, for me, it's my miniatures painted the standard I do in my videos, um, and and I once I've painted that standard, I can't. I mean, I'm not the high standard. These are still my rank and file, but I I can't go back to anything less than that now, which is a real sort of hamstrung me a little bit. So if I could just go and do the base coat on all of them, which I talk about in my videos, then I'd probably have no problem at all getting this done and getting it to a, a, paint, a, a sort of a playable level. But what's more likely to happen is if I don't get it all painted, I'll play a smaller game or I'll play a different game. Um, go for a small elite force, probably the wrong army for that, um, Andy. But yeah, I could go for a, a smaller, more elite force. I can see, you know, if I fail, I'll just end up playing Warcry up at, at Warhammer World in the afternoon. I'm meeting up with Jordan Sorcery there. Um, and you know, I'm having a having a bit of a relaxing day. I think I'm going to head over to the Square Base GT and the on the Saturday daytime, just have a little snoop around, 
before before driving back. So um, yeah, if I don't get it painted, I don't. But the idea, the plan was to play a couple of games of of Old Bod, and all I've played so far of Old Bod is 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 in this room messing around and a little playing around with my son. I want to, you know, with all due respect to my nine year old, I wanted to play a couple of proper games. Um, so I'm still going to give it a go and try and get this all done. Cheers, Alid. Lots of models. You know, they might be nice looking models, but they definitely need paint. Life's too short for eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, I know what you mean. I think sometimes I don't. Depends on the miniatures. Some It's like Perry sculpts for Napoleonics or something like that. They're almost sculpted in a way that you, you don't paint the eyes. They're not. They've got kind of holes rather than eyeballs sculpted in, so you don't always want to there. I've started painting this and I've not even got a plan for what, what, how I'm going to paint it. So how's your, um, how's your skellies coming along, uh, Raph and Ruins? I don't, I don't know whether to use people's real names or their, when I know them or the <laughs> or your, uh, YouTube names. So I'll play safe most of the time. Um, but you know, skelly, skelly projects, um, been going well on the uh, on the Discord, so you've got a lot built. I, I won't be painting the giant on the, the stream tonight, Andrew. I'm uh, That's going to be a tutorial this month. Um, probably two weeks' time, Friday, Friday or Saturday, if I can get it edited in time. So that will be a, a normal tutorial. Also, Neil saying, doing a fairly big blanket paint, one colour unit, all bits of colour on, then washes, dry brush. Yeah, not much. Yeah, I mean, I tend to do big batch paints. So if I was sitting here doing the men at arms now, I would just sit and do the flesh on all of them. But I thought it'd be a little bit more interesting if I at least worked on a single miniature where you might see a little bit of progression over the course of the stream. I haven't really talked about how long I was going to make it. I think the plan was to try and do at least an hour and see how it went. So obviously when it's just me here talking, it can get a little bit boring for people. And sometimes I'll have some guests on, it makes it a little bit easier to make the stream last a little bit longer. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go through the monthly hobby pledge stuff in a bit as well. So you won't just see me at, at the painting desk. Um, and as I said, it will vary from stream to stream. We'll see how it goes. And sometimes I'll have a bigger topic, and sometimes I'll have a guest. And we'll see how many bored people are, how many people are watching. And uh, hopefully, I want to, I want to also want it to be something that's got some kind of merit for people who don't watch it at the time, and people that come back afterwards. I mean, for a, if I was doing this as commission. Um, Again, I, I think I'd probably still, you know, this is a big job. It wouldn't take me a small amount of time. It would uh, still take me a best part of a couple of weeks, I'm sure. Um, but I, I definitely wouldn't be sitting with it all like this on the desk. Um, but would I be would I be concerned about getting it done for the end of the month? No, I wouldn't if it was a commission. But uh, I suppose that's the joys of doing a day job. Like this, Fernando. I'll take, Fernando, usually stick to skirmish games because they're easy to paint and became interested in the old world because your videos as a historical game. I don't know which faction would suit you best. Um, I used to stick to skirmish games, Fernando, and then and then I sort of got dragged back into uh, army games with uh, some historical gaming and black powder and things like that. And then I promised myself I wouldn't get back into to fantasy with the old world um, but that was foolish because it's my favorite ever game and there's no way I was going to be able to ignore it especially when they started showing off miniatures and things like that so very foolish so in terms of armies what 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 I can always say Fernando, to go with what you like the look of the models because that's the you spend a lot of time painting the miniatures so it's got to be something you enjoy um and if it's 
or probably going bigger than that, what, what interests you most in gaming? Is it the way that the game plays and the army plays, or is it the way the miniatures look in history? And if you're a historical gamer, I'm going to make a massive assumption that you... Um, it's not just about the mechanics of the way an army plays for game style, it's also about your, you know, the way the army looks and the history and all the stuff around it. And if that is the case, definitely go with that for, for, for Old World and pick something that way. I mean, do you want to pick something that's almost pseudo-historical? What historical periods do you do you play? And if you pick something that's pseudo-historical, do you want to just go, oh, this is, I'm, you know, this is not historical, so you're going to play something wildly different to, to what you have in the past? You know, if you paint land snacks or something for historicals, you probably want to stay away from Empire. Um, but... You never know, if that's your main thing, you might want to do the same for Empire, I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you play historical-wise and what, what attracts you at the moment to Old World? What, what armies are standing out for you? We've only got th three weeks to paint those skellies. I mean, uh, that was another suggestion John made after the uh, patron only video was that maybe maybe I should do not do this army and do, do the Tomb Kings, which is probably not a bad shout. The problem is... I know I need to buy more stuff and I don't want to purchase anything else now. Um, Tomb Kings aren't a very... My collection is... I can get up to 2,000 points, but it's mainly just skellies at the moment. I need to go and buy a couple of constructs and stuff, and I don't know whether, how I want the list to go. Um, but I, this is the army I'm interested in most, so I want to get this done. Um, I can work on the... Uh, work on the, the other things at a slower pace. I've got lots of other old world projects I want to start as well, and I feel like I can do that once I've got my... Uh, so I've got these Bretonians done. I've actually made quite a cool but expensive purchase recently. And these are a bit marmite, these, and I'm not going to open them now. Still sealed, 6th edition plastic dwarves. Um, as I said, they're definitely marmite because a lot of people didn't like this version of the sculpts. Um, but I've always been a fan of them. But because I wasn't gaming at that point, I was having my uh, off at university break from gaming. I missed out on them, so while I had a few of them as uh, as a dwarf player, I had to strip them and only had a handful of them, so I'm really looking forward to unboxing those and building them. We'll do some kind of video on them as well, I think. But um, yeah, they, they, they were a bit of an investment because they were sealed, but they should be cool. I've had to order a few more, so you get 16 in those boxes as well. So I managed to find a few at the same time painted, just so I can uh, make a proper size unit. So I've got an, another another 16 coming that I'll need to strip. I think the plan will be to do 10, uh, 10 quarrelers with great weapons and then do a unit of warriors, maybe with a unit filler as well, so a decent enough size. But that is definitely for another project and another month. I can't, I, I've deliberately not taken the cellophane off for two reasons. One, because I'm going to do something with a video with it. But then also, I can't be distracting myself building those. Like I've nearly, I nearly put my Darko sa Savages on square bases the other day after seeing those Dark Oath, and I should stop them myself. Maybe this is the problem. Maybe this is why I can't get armies finished because I've got too many projects going on and I can't, can't stop distracting myself. But my, I've got a, a plan for a Dwarven army in the future, um, and the plan is just to pick some of my favourite sculpts from over the, the years. I was just going to go full metal, and I had a full metal one that I sold before, before the world blew up, the old world blew up, and I sold them, and it's my only hobby regret in terms of selling an army. And I had a lot of vintage stuff and, and, and stuff from all eras. Um, but I had 30 metal slayers right, from, right back in sort of third edition era to lots of sixth edition ones as well really really cool um but yeah regret doing it but i don't want to go full metal i just want to pick things i like the look of the only bit and I, you've probably seen it before i reach and get it the only thing that i've got left for it it says reaching around if i can find it here it is
I painted this a long, long time ago. That's an old uh, gobblobber. I'm missing some bits. I'm missing the, the little guy sitting smoking. I'm missing the, the pig on a spit um, and the chef. But there's enough. There's four for crew, so it will be enough. But it needs, needs stricken now. So that was the only thing left over from my my 8th edition army. Um, that's such a cool model, so I'll have some fun stripping that and um, kind of using that in the army. So I've already got the beginnings of it, but I need to get these brets done. And hope that they don't, I hope for when dwarves come out, they don't come out too close to Empire as well. So I'll, if, if anyone from GW is listening, please don't bring them all out at the same time because it'll uh, send me into meltdown. Evening, we have more arrivals. Thank you for everyone who's watching this first rather late stream. For anyone who's arriving late, my Mac decided to crash uh, three minutes before the stream went live. And when it crashes, it stays crashed for quite a while. It takes ages to reboot. Um, it used to, when you reboot, it used to ask if you want to restart all the programs, and now it just doesn't. Now it just tries to start everything. So it tries to do it all at once, and it goes into meltdown. And it was a bit of a nightmare. So I know that when it crashes, there's a good half an hour wait. And when I, uh, Martin, seventh son from uh, another YouTube channel, I say before we had him as a guest on the, the Hobby Hour, my Mac crashed. And it took half an hour to get everything back up and running again. And it was very frustrating. So the perils. When I did the test the other night, obviously nothing went wrong at all. Right then, what colour shall I? I have no idea what colour to do her dress. Uh, this lady has some interesting lore I've been working on. So those of you who are familiar with old Warhammer fiction novels, maybe watch Jordan Saucer and I on his uh, books club talking, you're familiar with um, Genevieve, um, we'll know that she's a... Uh, the lore for vampires changed a little bit. So she's a, uh, a not fully dead vampire, which I don't think really counts in the modern day lore, but I don't care about that. Um, and she doesn't kill, doesn't feed and kill, she only feeds with consent um, and the idea is the reason my Bretonian army are exiles is because they're hiding a dark secret which uh, this lady is now a secret not fully dead vampire um, and the idea is that uh, as the uh, the lord has aged she hasn't been aging and they're having to kind of keep it a bit of a secret but then she comes out and is an outcast warrior in my in my army, I thought it'd be a fun, fun thing, little thing to do. Red, hmm, mm. I mean, yeah, red would probably work, wouldn't it? If she's, uh, maybe it gives away, uh, I suppose it, if she's red, it doesn't show up the stains if she does go off feeding. <laughs> um, white dress probably wouldn't be the best thing. I, th I think a darker colour is better. Um, as, uh, I think my normal dams are, I'm gonna go with white or something like that, so red for sure. Mm -hmm. Right then, so what red should we go for? Um, might, might try something new, which is risky. When I'm waiting for that flesh colour. So, a bit of velvet red from uh, Express Colour. We'll see. normally default to contrast for my reds because um, I know how they behave but we'll uh, have a little look mm, not so sure it's always a time to try a colour you've never used before on a model on a live stream eh? I'll go with just the bottom half for now. It's not as dark as I figured it might be. Not a problem though. Nothing's uh, unworkable. Definitely looks very different in the bottle. 
velvet red. It's got almost pinkish tones to them. But who knows? Yeah, I need to really need to get those. Oh, this is a new brush, not a loose bristle. Need to get the Wave 2 Express Color. I really want to get some, try some of the uh, new Fanatic paint. Did anyone pre order um, Army Painter Fanatic? Interested. So I, I didn't. I nearly did. Um, and I have got in touch with them. See, I don't want to send me any, but they're. Uh, their procedure for getting in touch with them is quite tricky, so I'm still waiting to hear from them. And they did get back to me and asked me to fill in a form. And I filled in the form, and then they got back to me and said, can you fill in the form? And I just had to do the same thing. They replied to my email with the form asking me to fill in the same form, so I'm not really sure what's going on. But um, I, the reason I'm looking at Army Painter Fanatic is because I've seen a lot of reviews and it looks really, really good now. I mean, no, I wouldn't say it's any better by the size of things than the new model colour or, or, or other ranges like that. But I'm, I'm looking for something that's a fantasy range that has lots of the kind of the brighter colours that are good substitutes for Citadel. Um, I'm looking for something that's good value, which Army Painter tend to be, and readily available, which again, it's something you just see in all hobby stores and it's in every, nearly every hobby store sells them, um, which helps for tutorials as well, because a lot of people can get hold of them and use them. So if I suggest something in a tutorial, People can go and get a hold of it. And I, and I just didn't like the old war paints range. I just thought it was awful, if I was honest with you. It just you wasn't you couldn't thin it very well, it would separate, it wouldn't wasn't robust enough. And then all the reviews I've read of it just seemed like that all of the issues have been resolved and it just seems really, really good. And I love the fact that it's in these I I don't know what they call it, sort of double triads or whatever it happens to be. But little six six colours in a in a range which you can pick any three concurrent colours and they work. Um, so they ended up back in tooth and coat. See, that's that's an, another one. I'm, basically, I'm in the market to replace my Scale 75 full range. So I'm barely using it. I love the metallics. So I'll stick to those. But for a standard range, and I love my model colour, and I'll stick using those. I just need something for a fantasy range. And tooth and coats was another potential. And the other one is the new, the new formula Vallejo. But they're just a nightmare to get hold of. When you there's no there's no paint sets out for them that I can see. They're all the old paint sets. Um, and when I start a new range, I like to get a bit of a starter set at least. And then while I'm googling it, I notice that on the continent you can buy these little color range sets. You get four colors that are a bit like a triad plus one other color. Um, and that's a, I love buying paints in that way. You think, well, I want some greens, so you get three greens or four greens that work together as a set. Do you think it's a good way of of, of buying? own paints but anyway we'll wait and see what if army painter get back to me but i just really like the look of the fanatic paints they just look like they'll do what i need them to do and once they're fully out they should be really easy to get hold of and they're just they're like they're cheap and might be a good good alternative to citadel basically we go purple with Maria. <laughs> um, yeah, so well, I could do purple as well. Purple goes nice with red, so I might well, might well go for some purple as well. I'll add, and I spin a new express range. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep using all of the express color and all of the speed paints and, and contrast as well, because I'm finding that I haven't found one that just does it all. Um, I'm really sort of like picking particular colors for different things, and that's cool. Um, but as we got, so I just end up back in here. So two thin coats, let's talk about they. Have you got them already, Steve? Or are they, is that the new expansion of two thin coats you've backed? So I've only got one. No, I haven't, two. I've got two thin coats paints I picked up. A green, which didn't impress me. Nothing wrong with it, but just there was nothing that stood out to me at all. Um, ethereal green. Um, I just, yeah, I bought it and just didn't think it was that. And then Trooper White, and I've not used that. Um, 
I just picked it up because I needed to try a green for something. Something something I feel like I'm missing. I've got all the model colour greens, but vibrant greens from when I want to go and highlight some green. I'm thinking, oh, I haven't got what I need in my in my range. And oranges as well. I always feel I'm short of a range of useful oranges in my sets. So again, I just keep going back to that Fanatic range. It looks massive. Nearly every colour you'd ever want. So I don't know. I need to try it. And if I like it, I'll probably invest in it all. New model colour tries are listed in the colour chart on their site. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen them on their site. I'm just buying them in the UK, Andy. That's the. I'm just hoping that they that one of the third party retailers would would have it. But maybe I just need to order direct from them, and they, maybe they maybe they ship well. I'm just a bit worried about if I order a lot, how much the customs are going to hit me. It's a bit painful at the moment. I get hit with work all the time. Um, things used to be a little bit simpler, but we won't go down that route because. Starts conversations around awkward things. Uh, pretty nice paints, nothing new, like consistent coverage. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that's the thing. I want something that's. It's about being able to get hold of them easy enough. I suppose they, they're easy to get online. I just figured that uh, Army Painter would, again, eventually be better online. Can I get under there? You uh, kit bash models with uh, stupid headdresses on and you can't actually get underneath to paint anything. You know, when I did Horus Heresy gaming, I used to do so much sub-assembly and it bored me so much. I've got a bit lazy with it again. I probably should have left her head off. Oh, the, okay. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's the little sets that aren't out. The, the main colour range is out, isn't it? Cause, when I buy it now, when I order it now, you tend to get the new new style. So this is the new model there. Um, new game colour, off-white. So I just haven't seen them in the UK. If I Google sets for model, for game colour in the UK, it just brings up all of the old formulation ones. Um, I just it's found it's getting a little bit hard to get Vallejo paints in the UK, which seems a bit crazy. They seem to be the kind of the staple everywhere. You could always get them, but they seem to be going out of stock a lot. Hello, everyone that's joining you. We're just talking very generally about paint in a moment. That's not even the topic of the day show, but... <laughs> um, I can only go on for so long about how I've got a whole army to paint. But if anyone's got any tips about how they work through large projects and stay focused in a short period of time, pop them in the chat. A little bit, we'll take a little break and go and have a look at the monthly hobby pledge for Feb and try and look at some results. I'm just going to get the Discord page up and scroll through that so we can... I don't know how easy it's going to be able to see, but uh, I know some of you are in the chat who have completed your your pledges, unlike me who did nothing. That's a lie. I I bought some movement trays and, 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 and adjusted my pledge and changed the size and the, the shape of the unit in terms of the three ranks rather than four. That wasn't exactly painting them though, was it? Lumineth, oh, fantastic. See, this is the problem. Um, D-A-F-Q. Um, it's, it's really, really hard when everyone's got different um, usernames and all the different things. It's really, and then some of you I know anyway. Some of you, I, I know who your names are and don't know whether I should be using your real names or your online names. And some of you have a different online name for every single thing. So it's, it's all good fun. But hey-ho, that's the way it is. I probably would as well, to be honest with you, if I didn't have it set because of my channel and just use it, just use the same for everything now. I probably would have different names for different account, different uh, platforms as well. And that colour's grown on me. It definitely feels pinkish um, rather than velvet red. don't know what I'm going to highlight it with, but we'll worry about that at another point. Hi 
Right then, so let's, let's have a look at what we got up to for the monthly hobby pledge and have a little, a little look there. Let's see if this is all still working. Right. Right, and so for those of you who don't know, um, I set this up in February. Um, I was just having a little think about what I was going to do for um, a bit of extra engagement on the Discord, most, mostly, but also wanted to open it up to the people on the channel for a for a bit of a wider, a bit of a wider thing, really. Um, let's put me back on. Um, so I I wanted to do something that everyone could join in. Um, and I wanted to do something that, that wasn't necessarily a competition because I didn't want people competing. Um, and I did want to be able to give something a little bit extra to the patrons as well, but that anybody could join. Um, you just need to be part of the Discord really in order to sort of show your progress, but you can still play along at home without even uh, joining in. But the, the, the idea is you make your own pledge for the month and it could be one single minute it could be anything it could be just base one model if you really want to but set yourself a goal of what you want to achieve that month for your hobby um, and then at the end of the month you just reply to your your pledge with your results hopefully with a pitch or something saying yeah i've done it or no i haven't done it and it's a pure bit of fun you're only competing against yourself so i did a little short video on it on on youtube um, and that's where this little, funny little logo thing came from. Um, and, it, you know, it drove a few people to, to, to the Discord channel, which was cool. Um, and I just thought it would be um, fun to go and see how everyone's got on. Um, so the plan really is just to engage people. Now, the difference is, is if you, have, if you are a patron and you complete your pledge, bear in mind you set your own pledge, you completely gain this, um, you, you earn a dice. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be ordering a separate colour of dice. Now, patrons over a certain level get a set of dice sent to them every January anyway. They get, it's, a, it's one of the one of the tier pledges. I'm not going to turn it into an advert for, for the for the patron, but those people get them anyway. And in January, I send out the new colour. And the plan is every January, I will also tot up all of the individual dice that they've earned through the monthly hobby pledge as well and then send them out at the same time and they'll be a different color just a bit of fun so you can earn some dice and it's only one per month so the max you're going to earn in a year is 12 we didn't start till february so technically 11 though if anyone does get all 11 i will round it up to 12 for them so they get a full set um, and there you go that was my pledge so i was the first post there and there's no rules to it other than you set your own goal you can even adjust your goal in the middle of the month you know if someone's ill for a week and so i'm going to do one less it's fine you make your own rules and that is the thing so it's just about giving yourself a target and, and, and achieving it and as you've seen for, for what i've done i need to because it's far too easy for me to do other things around the hobby so do making videos reading books to go on the jordan sorcery um books club channel and things like that so i need a little bit of a kick in the behind to make sure i do and it didn't work my first month for me but that was for other reasons and i talked about that in the and my little hobby patron diary thing really about busy family stuff and things but here's what it is so that was my pledge done none of it but let's go and look at some people who have done things so you can see yourselves in here and the bits you've you've pledged so which hunter english was pledged to finish painting bretonian um box set together and undercoated so finish putting it together and undercoat it we'll find out later what people have done paint 1250 points of dark elves um catch our man quality over quantum me so five models for an infinity list and then we have raf and roman who was uh, peasant hordes um now he's on the uh, the bony hordes this month um and then we got matilda to communista um to pledge to paint old metal marathi 36 star felt spearman yeah, and so on and so on um neil Furman. I need to do six command stands. I think he updated that later on, but six. I've deleted a lot of the messages, I should say. So if you're looking back at this and you're more, when I originally set it up, everyone just got chatting, including myself. Um, and it became really, really hard to see what people have pledged amongst all the other chatters. So I went back and pretty much deleted everything that wasn't a pledge or a result of the pledge. So, we, so I can just keep it manageable. Um, and it's a pledge to rebase Wood Elves, right back from Kings of War to Old World. Sounds like a good thing to me. Um, and then we got them um, paintings, um, Dreadites. Oh, he's got the yeah, Judge Dread stuff. Well, let's, let's click Dave. 
painting units with his wife. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot of stuff on here. But once we start getting to uh, the results, it's probably a little bit more interesting than, than seeing. Um, and there's Andes with 28 mil pipe and shot armies, two foot units, um, 12 Chaos Warriors for Andy C68. Um, and there we go. So first one's coming in already. Um, so those were the, the Dread models. And they, there's some cool sculpts there. I've done a few of those myself. Um, Neil Thurman that was his sort of an updated one. So that was halfway through, painting those command stands. Um, Lana with the um, tanks and bits from Flames of War. Um, and then B Man 19. Oh, do I need to post my pledges? Okay, he's half done. So, yeah, so we already started his things. Um, and then duh, 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 duh. James was, was his pledge was different. It was about practicing wet blending. So, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be finished whole units. It can be about practicing a technique, um, just something hobby related, really, building or painting generally. Uh, we're not talking about just reading books or something like that. It's, it is aimed at using the brush or the glue in some way. Papa Rogo finished his pledge for the month um, using the uh, my tutorial for the gobos. Um, and there's Dave halfway through with his pleasure, what he's doing with his wife. And they're sort of painting. I think it's her first, I think Dave's watching today, but I think that might be her first sort of painting stuff. I know she does a bit of art and things, but that's quite cool. Um, you know, ben getting his Empire stuff done. That was me updating some rules. We'll skip past that. There we go. Catch a man, pledge done. So there's those five infinity models. So basically everyone's showing me up and completing their pledges. Wrath and Rune, all those lovely Bretts done, showing me how they should be done. Um, and there we go. And James has finished his Faramir, and that looks really awesome. Really, really nice work, James. Um, Lana then with her Warmaster, which was the other part of the pledge. So that's done. Um, Alid with all of his um, many would be king stuff. Again, done. All the everyone showing me up. Um, again, oh, well, I have to admit to feet, um, barring characters, but he's done loads there. You've done loads there. That's not. I don't know why it's suddenly short, making all your names small on there, so I can't read them all out. I'm trying to remember too many people's names, but cool stuff. And then Andy again, um, results for his February pledge, just in time. Uh, lovely pike and shot stuff. Um, ben here with his first things, for his first pledge competing the archers. Um, we're getting towards the end of the month now. Got Marathi done, Bleak Souls done, failed the rest of the pledge. Well, it's still more than me. Um, just read the rules probably. This is February pledge finished and DC 68. Fantastic. Look at those lovely Chaos Warriors. Pretty old, some of those ones. Um, what have we got there? Curie pledge finished, 24 peasant bowmen. Um, duh, duh, duh. And then this is the new stuff. This is what people, a mixture of people pledging new stuff and new ones ending. So uh, there's John there. Three, uh, four, three base regiments of Pike and Shot. Um, some more Infinity models. Get soon with his painting. Um, these are his. Oh, right, he's going to tell me off because I keep. He keeps telling me what the game is for, and I keep forgetting. But those are for. No, nope, it's called Come Back to Me in a minute. Uh, March Pledge. Do, do, do. Allied. Got loads of more twenty mil models. Um, another uh, more archers for Ben. Finish 12 more bowmen and more rules from me. And then I'm saying, Lord, I've utterly failed. And I think now we're on to people's new pledges for the month. We'll, we'll go through those at another point. Um, but I think it was pretty, pretty cool how many people got involved in that. Um, I, uh, I'm going to lean across and get my phone so I can see what's going on in the chat. I I didn't expect that many people to join in. That's what I hoped, if I'm honest with you. I'd love, I'd love to have seen, you know. So I wanted to see lots of people get involved and talk about it, um, which made me feel extra bad that I didn't finish mine. Um, but um, so my pleasure this month is to, to paint what you see on that desk, essentially. And that, that my, my stretch goal is to paint the full army. My, my part goal is to get 1250 points playable. So at least I can... Um, play a decent sized fun game with Jordan and then we can team up for the for the 2000 point game I play maybe we can team up together and, and, and play Val from Square Based um, 
but um, it's been lovely to see and I hope it continues now. I hope it grows. I hope people keep doing it all year. As I said, it's a really fun thing to do. You set your own goal. Hopefully it works, gives you a little bit of a, a boost to try and achieve your own things. And if you, again, if you're patrons as well, you can even get, a, you know, a crew some dice that you get sent at the end of the year as well, which is really, really cool, um, which is you know, not, not a nice little fun little extra. And I might do more with it later in, in the year. Um, I just didn't want to build it into a, something that was competition like. Now, I am planning some competitions soon. Um, I'm going to be giving away a pike and shot start set. Um, the reason for that being is that I wanted to paint some of the new Scots, the Highlanders. And so my, I, people know I have a relationship with, with Warlord Games. And I was chatting to Kieran there and he says, there's anything I can send you? I said, can you just send me enough to paint a stand of the Highlanders? Um, and they sent me the whole starter box, the whole Scottish starter box, which if I'm honest with you, I would have bought over the other one if they were both out at the same time. It's a slightly smaller, more manageable box um, for Pike and Shot and I just really like it. Um, so what I'm going to do is replenish, I've only taken two frames out of my own Pike and Shot starter, I'm going to replenish those, replace those frames I've, I've, I've um, used, I've not touched anything else in it, and I'm going to, the Scots Army will become mine now. Um, because Warlord very kindly gave me that um, the real perks of the channel well I'm going to pass that kindness on another way and do a do a giveaway now I haven't worked out fully how I'm going to do it it's probably going to be in April now because this month is just going to be crazy um, so it'll probably be in April um, but I'll do a giveaway for that and um, it'll be one that anyone can enter but I want to give the patrons a little bit of an extra chance to do it so I need to find a way of doing that um, so if you just comment on a video that gives everyone an equal entrance I do want to give my patrons a little bit of a, an extra kickback a little bit of an extra bonus but also I didn't want to just do a patron only competition I want to open up to everyone um, so that should be should be some fun um, so watch out for that one if you're interested in some epic stuff um, and, and, and I hopefully in, in April I'll get that painting tutorial so maybe that's when I'll launch it is when I do the the painting tutorial for those those Highlanders. Um, right then, let's, I'm going to go check the chat now, see what I've missed out on. Um, dun, dun, dun. Got wave one and wave two. Is making army list now part of the pledge? Um, it, it would be good if it was, John, because I would uh, I'd be doing very well. As I've, I've I've made about four or five in the last few days. Um, and two will get called Iggy by people. Uh, I don't know, usually, it's good. Uh, my name, Lonely in Bed, yep, yep, Lonely in Bed, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a good, it's a good Discord name, um, but yeah, you, I, I, I know exactly who you are now, um, da, 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 John Foster, is there a link to the Discord, yes, there will be, um, the links on all of my social media, um, and it's in every video, um, and it was, will be in this one when it goes up. Um, I don't know what how it. It's the first live I've properly done. I think I think it goes up auto, almost automatically. So when the this is finished, it, this turns into a video. So there will be a link in the video description if you want to look at it now. Instagram, I've got um, little short shortcuts at the top, and in those shortcuts, they're like a mini mini video thing, and you can click on the link in there, and then you can find it on the. the Facebook and, and, and Twitter and things like that as well. But the easiest way is just on a on a video description. Um, sorry, you're late. Look, you're you're, you're um, Kitsune, You you missed. Um, I'm going to use. I don't know if you want me to use your real name or not. But I'm going to. You missed me forgetting what um, game your miniatures are from again. Um, and I feel like I should know, so you can tell everyone in the chat. Um, so you've been impressed. Yeah, I'm very impressed how much people can get done, which is weird because I I paint loads. Anyway, I've, you know, I've got for work, but I just, for my own personal thing, just don't seem to get it done. Um, yes, Andy, I do agree. What a great set of pledge completions. I, like I was saying, it's just really, really, really cool how people kind of got engaged with it and did it. And I hope it continues and, and grows even more. And maybe I'll have to do a whole stream while I just go through it. I think flicking through the Discord then, I don't know what you guys think. I didn't think that worked very well for, for seeing it. So I probably need to put a bit of work in and actually just take pictures 
and just post pictures up of people's pledge and then completion so I can see it rather than just scrolling through. But let me know what you think. If you thought the scrolling through was fine, it's definitely easier for me to just to scroll through and show what's on my screen and share my screen. Um, yeah, but Pad, well, your, your elves are looking awesome. Um, Padge, really, really nice. So, um, and it's nice to see you uh, getting tempted in to Old World. I do feel slightly guilty that I got you tempted into Pike and Shot as well, and uh, you've, um, we were, we're going to play a game, and that just never happened. So, um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you don't resent just starting games because because um, you watch my videos. Oh, Ben, Ben, nice to see you. you. Just managed to join before you started. The joys of being on the other side of the world. Well, I bet your weather is a lot nicer than than it is here. For your for your start to work um so now we have had the sun out today but I, I don't think the temperature got into double digits and i think it's a little bit different for you over in brisbane right then so let's um let's um a couple of other things i wanted to um to chat about before um so i you know i do the the book club with um jordan sorcery well some of you may know some of you may not so if you haven't checked him out already jordan sorcery's youtube channel is amazing it's all warhammer history and if you're a war gamer of a certain age or just like old hammer or middle hammer stuff and enjoy the history of the game which appeals to many people like me in my 40s who who sort of started back with third edition and, and, and played all kinds of games virtual games um he's got so many good interviews his latest interview is with steve jackson so he's just got some really really big names on there but anyway on his channel we do something called a um the book club which is the gw books from the original 17 books that games workshop um novels this is games workshop released back in sort of the eight, late 80s early 90s before they stopped producing books and then later on the black library came along so it was the original books you can just see most of them lined up over there in the corner so you're looking at uh, ignorant armies dragon fells that kind of stuff and we've just i've just finished reading um what was it red thirst and um, we're recording that one next week it won't go out to the end of the month on his channel but we we read them he does a live stream and chats it with chats about it with his patrons for some patron only live stream he does and then we we record it like a podcast and we discuss it and discuss the book um it's just great fun i've really enjoyed doing it and it's got me reading properly again since i had kids i've, I've kind of got out of the habit of reading um, and i've got far used to doom scrolling on my phone so it's got me reading books again rather than just listening to audiobooks which is what i do when i work so it's been really really good and um, we've just finished that but because we finished it early with something else in mind so we're doing a bit of pre-advertising for him now i've already listened to this but i'm going to be going back and giving it a second read this time after listening to it so it's lords of the lance graham mcneil um some responses online a little bit been a little bit more con controversial i say controversial um it seems to be a little bit marmite for some people um i really enjoyed it and the, the audio and i'm looking forward to reading it um but i think there's a few people i've been careful not to go down a rabbit hole here but there's some people don't like it because there's some law things that have changed slightly um there are some night there's there's some female knights you can imagine that certain sections of the internet don't like that kind of thing um but there's some some knights using missile weapons using bows also these female ones um doesn't worry me too much i mean the bretonians historically didn't use um missile weapons apart from the really old bretonians and this just shows you how much law changes that the sixth edition bretonian army book which was the the last edition until the new rules came out it was 20 years difference um while we might be using 20 year old models um the law and the rules and things have to change with the times a little bit in my opinion so if you take away those things um i'm not sure what other people don't like about it but um lots of people love it as well so it's not a i wouldn't say it was a shocking book. but anyway if you're at all interested in my thoughts on that book watch out towards the end of this month maybe early next month when jordan and i will do a, a like an extra book club on on that one so i thought it'd be a cool thing to see um but yeah really 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 cool so i'm gonna give it another what shall I do? I'm going to do another five, ten minutes worth of, of painting um, and then I might call it an end here for the first um, sort of irregular ramble uh, stream, an hour or so. I think sometimes I'll do a little bit more, especially when I've got something more focused on painting. 
um, and I will show a technique or discuss a technique so it almost becomes like a live tutorial. Um, but I didn't really have that plan for this first one. I wanted to go over the, the pledge results and things, talk about a little bit of news there because I'm not doing a hobby hour for another three weeks or so and, and mostly go over the, the monthly hobby pledge. So I will go back to desk cam um, and do a little bit more work on that outcast um, wizard um, and then go through the chat a little bit more and then we'll see how it goes, maybe another 10 minutes or so. And then uh, well, that will be the end of the, the first one. But I'll swap back to uh, desk cam. Um, and we'll uh, see which colour to go with next. So that red, as I say, is a little bit lighter than I expected, but I can definitely work with it. Um, now, do I go purple on the uh, the headdress, or shall I go something else? Not sure. I definitely feel like she's going to need some kind of dark hair. Um, with her slightly vampiric background story. For those of you who missed that part, I, will, I'll, I won't repeat that and bore that everyone again here. I'm planning, when I when, when I finally painted this, uh, this Bretonian army, um, and rather than just doing a sort of straight up showcase video, which I think is a little bit, um, a little bit strange, um, I, I thought I might do a law video on it, and I don't know what people think about that, whether it's something people will be interested in, is kind of showing the, the miniatures off and things, but almost presenting a properly read out law, which I haven't written yet for my army. I haven't done anything like that for years. I just wondered if people would be interested. If you've watched my Mordheim videos and things, you'll you know that I played around with a few effects and a little bit of uh, silly voices and stuff. But um, I wonder if it'd be fun to do something like that for my my army would would that be something that people watch or would you is that something you duck and rather just i stick to painting videos and things i'd be quite interested to know check the chat again oh wow medic mark thank you thank you thank you, for, thank you so much very 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 super kind of you <laughs> pad yes i do have much to answer for i used to have so when when I started playing some Middle Earth, and I dragged a few people with me from from playing Horus Heresy, um, they set up the hashtag "Infected by Stew," which is not a very nice hashtag. I'm not really. They, they obviously meant it in terms of uh, getting them to play other games, but it doesn't. It's not something I ever used. Um, <laughs> probably should move my phone with the chat out of the way. Um, Cyberpunk, of course, I am sorry, sorry, Cyberpunk, where those miniatures are from. And I knew it was something like that, and I'll just, it, it just escaped me. Are they based on the Cyberpunk computer game, or are they based on the old Cyberpunk um, RPG stuff? It'd be interesting to know. Are you adding Heldry on her? Probably not. Um, I don't think she'd, I don't know, I don't, I don't think she'd have Heldry on her dress or something. Um, yeah, Padge, I'm yeah, The giant is is going to be this month, and he will be a painting tutorial. Um, so you, you missed at the beginning of the uh, the stream. I talked about it a little bit. So he is a unit filler for this army, as well as being a giant on his own. So if I complete my painting pledge and do my army, he will be done. Um, love to hear the lore and story behind the army. Love that stuff. That's cool, I'm glad someone would. Like the look of the red velvet looks very Oscar's red carpet. Um, I think some lore would be fun behind the mini. Thanks, Ben. LS, showcase plus personal lore, that'd be fun. I like things like that, that's cool. I wanna make it make it interesting, definitely. I wanna make it a, a good watch. Um, I think it's weird how channels grow. I think when I was sort of under a thousand subscribers and it shouldn't matter but I think when I was under a thousand subscribers I'll have just done a showcase I'll have just moved my camera along and saying this unit is this this unit is that but now I feel I don't know feel like I want to do a slightly higher standard of production which sounds pretty laughable considering what I've been doing this evening um, of, of, of having problems with computers crashing and starting late and, and me just rambling on here but in terms of video quality i kind of like the idea of presenting stuff as something that's watchable and I, I watch a lot of other youtube now and i look for look at way that other people do stuff and how the video almost becomes entertainment as well things like 
Eric's hobby workshop, he will he will do a project, but the way he presents the video is, he sp obviously spent a lot of time planning it out and writing it and things, and and I quite I quite want to do something similar. So I'm, I'm going to risk it. I'm going with purple. I'm going with Le Leviathan purple as well from uh, from Citadel Contrast, which is very very rich in colour. So I'm going in all I'm going all in here, but purple and red always looks good together. Um, love a good bit of law, that'd be fun. <laughs> love a good bit of law. Harkan Iron Blade is the core general of Bisticles, right? Yeah, so you've got some law stuff already. I'd love to other people to share their law as well. Maybe that needs to be a, a, um, a separate channel on the Discord. Might be a cool thing to do. Just a law channel where people can go and write up their law and share it. I suppose you get a bit of a character limit, don't you? So you'd have to upload a document, maybe. <laughs> Affected by Stu. I'm glad, that, Frederick, I'm glad that you went down the... Um, went down the route of unsafe food. Because um, um, there are other ways of looking at that. <laughs> Do I have any AOS? I don't have an AOS army at all at the moment. Um, I used to have a Stormcast army that was fully painted and never played a game and sold it on. I was talking to, again, talking to, to keep talking about Jordan Sorcery tonight, but I was talking to Jordan last night over on WhatsApp. We were planning things and, and I was just saying that how much I love the Dark Oaths, how much I love Cities of Sigmar. And if Old World wasn't around right now, it would have, those, those armies, those releases would have probably been enough to make me. Um, start AOS and I'm not saying I won't in the future either it's I might well give it a go um, but I think Old World's gonna scratch that fantasy style itch for me for a very very long time um, and whether um, AOS will do it for me I'm not sure AOS has come out now with all the stuff that if they'd done at the beginning with I probably would have got into it and played but they, they didn't have I always always sort of gravitate towards human looking armies um, and the storm cars just didn't have enough of that I always like to imagine a fantasy world where what's it like for normal people and that's always really important and in, in getting me into the lore of a game so that kind of feeling of what's it like to buy bread milk you know where, where do you where do you go for a beer and if you can imagine that in a fantasy world, I know all that stuff exists in AOS and has for a while. It just didn't feel like it was there at launch. And I know they sort of slowly started to, to add it and, and some of the novels added it, but the game felt like it was missing it. Um, and with Cities of Sigma now, they finally feel like they're adding that character. And I just think some of the best storytelling, you need a, a human perspective, something that we can relate to. Uh, some of my favourite... Um, Games Workshop Fiction is written by Dan Abner. He just does such a great job of telling things from a human perspective and it just makes it, in my opinion, infinitely more interesting. Those first few heresy novels, um, you look at uh, the, the first novel and, and he, you know, all the, this all told from perspectives of um, essentially artists and historians, humans that are there with, on the Great Crusade, with these legions um i would have been boring if it was just the legions but those that human perspective just made it um, relatable um and i and i think for me fantasy worlds need to be relatable in one way or another there you go going off on a tangent there Riddler's good thank you thank you I'm, I'm playing it very safe and just putting base coating down because i started this mini without even thinking about a color scheme it's just something to do really when i'm talking away What's everyone, is anyone reading anything related to any of the games they're playing at the moment? Any fiction or any sort of those historical gamers? Are you reading um, about campaigns and things? Interesting to know what people are reading. That might be something else for the Discord. Do we need a channel in there so people can talk about their books they're reading, make book recommendations and things? Because it's always been such a huge part of 
my hobby is supporting things. So when I can't paint, when I can't play games, I like things to kind of keep me in that world. So whether it's historical and I'm watching documentaries or I'm watching um, um, sort of battle reports or something for, for games or I'm listening to fiction... Um, I just love that kind of thing and um, find that it sort of means that I can expand my hobby beyond that and I can really lose myself into it. And, and working at a desk like this five days a week, painting miniatures, means I can get through quite a lot of audiobooks and quite a lot of YouTube. And so it's a, a good way of keeping involved. The time period for the game is prior to the video game. It's based off both. Okay, cool. So the Cyberpunk game is based off both but the time period periods where I remember owning I don't remember which but a very very early cyberpunk rule set and uh, have I even got it still I think I've shown it on a video he says looking at his shelf might be knocking around somewhere I have no idea what I did with it and I won't go off on a tangent maybe maybe it's my uh hobby ADHD here which leads me to looking at uh, on my shelves for a book that uh, means I don't get miniatures painted so who's reading what then so uh, and they read a lot of references about Ottoman Turks at the moment um, could be reading about historical medieval heraldry to get ideas from the Bretts and also Lawns and Lance how are you finding Lords of the Lance uh, Neil full set of Gotrick and Felix read all the time I love Gotrick and Felix Absolutely, I've got Trick and Felix. I think about the top of that headdress, maybe not making that purple. Mm. Undecided. And then what colour do we make her? Is that a boot or a tie? I think it's a big leather boot or something. to see when Vermintide characters end up in AOS well when Sigma teleports on survivors so I haven't played Vermintide it's very tempting my um, my Mac for those of you who waited for the stream to start isn't amazing um, and I don't have a, uh, a PC for gaming and things I have a PlayStation 5 which I just don't do any gaming if I did gaming I wouldn't get anything painted but I would like to keep it white and yeah, I think you're probably right, Andy. I think and I probably will keep that white. Um, right then, I might even paint in the black for the that long boot that's showing. While she's here. Fluff in my army, at least fluff in my army named three units of archers after the dragon and the giant eagle, the griffin, the talons of the stormwing, the fangs of Mithrandir and the claws of Sulinash. Yeah, love, love stuff like that. Absolutely love stuff like that. Which is weird. I used to love that as a, as a sort of a teen playing games and I, I guess I kind of stopped doing that. Even when I got back into gaming and I got into Warhammer, I don't. Th I think I had sort of maybe some head cannon, but I don't think I ever wrote anything down. Um, and it's, as I've got older, I just want to get back into it, I suppose. Yeah, I think Vermitide is on the, the PS5, to be honest with you. It would be dangerous if it is. I know even Mordheim's on there, and I know it's an old game. And I have no idea how, how good it is. But I, every now and then I'll see it, and I think if I download that. But if I download that, am I, am I going to get anything done? Potentially not. I don't, luckily, I don't get distracted by it, so that my, my PlayStation is in my living room. So it means I can only play it when the kids are in bed and the wife's not watching television as well. So that cuts out a lot of time. Boys are young enough where they're not really interested in it at the moment. And though my eldest probably would be that he's, he's happy enough on his Switch. Um, so maybe the gaming will come again. But right now it's a glorified Blu-ray player for me. And I don't watch Blu-rays anymore because I just stream everything. But I think it would be dangerous getting Vermintide. 
maybe I can treat myself if I finish actually finish an army for um, Old World. I can treat myself to playing some Verbal Tide or something. Really like it so far halfway. And yeah, I just yeah, I I I read it or listened to it. And then went online, so we're talking about Lords of the Lance here, and I'm reading comments for Curious, and really likes Lords of the Lance halfway through. A risk of preceding my reviews on, on Jordan's channel. I, I, I listened to it, thought it was great, and then went and looked at the reviews. Um, and it does seem to vary a little bit. Um, as I said, I'm cautious of getting into it. I think there is an element of people that think it's got woke elements to it and i think some of that unfortunately it just depends on your your politics and i'm definitely not going to get into politics um so it might come from your, your starting place um of of your view of the world or whether you think it's like that i just didn't even think of that i was naively just in, in, enjoyed it for what it is or i didn't think it think it was like that but i just enjoyed it i thought it was cool um and i thought it was relatively well written we've had some launch novels before in the past for, for games and things, and they used to be absolute trash. And when I saw it, it was Graham McNeil, who I'm, I'm a fan of anyway from his heresy books. So I just thought, there's a good chance it's gonna be good. And I think I think it is, and I hope there's more. Um, I hope there's more that we don't know about. So I hope that when they, maybe when the orcs finally come out, that we'll see them. But who knows, we will, we will see. Um, so what can I do? I might shade the white what I can and then we're at the stage where I'm going to leave everything because um, I want to decide what colours I'm going to highlight some of these with especially that red I may not even own the red I need and if you saw the paints that I have you'd think that was laughable but uh, that's the joys that comes with picking a red on the fly and going with it so I'm just using a little bit of the express colour um, Templar white with some medium. This is the out of all of the the contrast style whites. This is my favourite. Um, I think we've got enough white on there already. You need to just shade it a little bit. And that'll be ready for highlighting then. Things like white. These paints have just revolutionised used to be something that could be really relatively hard to paint for, for ages for years and years and years and i just white doesn't bother me at all now yellow's really really easy i probably spend more time thinking about how to highlight blues and greens than i do about painting whites and yellows and things like that now which is i wouldn't have said that a few years back so nothing super super exciting then um all right i'm gonna go back to main cam and um one last check of the chat and then we will uh, let you good people all go. We've gone for, for over an hour now and I think that's worth it. So I might extend them more in the future and take them up to, um, to about a couple of hours maybe. But um, maybe I'll do that if I have a guest on at some point so it's not just me monologuing to you or we have a bigger topic or something like that. And like I said earlier on, maybe I'll actually plan in to do a bit more of a live tutorial and actually plan what I'm going to paint rather than just pick up a miniature and start throwing some colour on it. But um, it was nice to actually get a little bit of hobby done regardless. Um, so I think starting computer games can be very dangerous for a man who has time is poor. Yes, you are you are right, Ben, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do. That. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to do that. Um, two colours left on the first unit of cavalry, monthly flesh, flesh, and orange sashes. Well done, John. Already, Tricanicus looks good. Um, as are the Inquisitor Eisenhorn was, yeah. Um, I love Inquisitor Eisenhorn, really, really good. And it's just basically anything Dan Abner does is usually good. Um, I, have, I have not read all the Gaunt's Goats stuff, I don't, know, I don't know why I missed out on that one. Um, but um, big, big fans of those. But um, I've been working my way through the end times as well, all the end times series of novels on audiobook, um, and I'm on the which book am i on so i'll turn off the chat for a second while i go and then see my audible on my phone the joys of everything been on your phone um the rise of the horn rat this is what i'm listening to at the moment by guy haley and it's um all skaven and dwarves and and orcs and goblins and it's hilarious um really really good so uh 
recommend it if you like a bit of Warhammer. It's just well written. There's enough. There's quite a lot of humour which you get from from some of those, which is fine. I always find Skaven hilarious to uh, in in stories and things. I did. I didn't. I like Gavthor, but I didn't get on with the his elf one so much. Um, just you don't. I don't know. I just couldn't didn't get couldn't fall in love with the characters at all. Um, Frederick, you should get a co-host, um, stream snacks and maybe go through it. I wonder who does it. It's a very, yeah, this is not going to ever be as good as a battle stream, Frederick. Uh, I will do one of these with Dan. I'm going to make Dan do one of these, but maybe we'll just make it a hobby hour as a live stream, as a, as a, as a special edition once a while. We'll do it as a live stream. Um, these, as I said, will be a bit irregular. I don't know if there'll be another one this month even. I'm looking at my schedule. I might try and do a second one this month. Might just be more painted of that stuff because I need it done. Um, but I'm definitely going to try and do at least one of these a month and, and pick a topic um, and squeeze it in. It was really handy to squeeze it in now when I'd probably get to the point when I was maybe recording a hobby hour with Dan. Um, so it was a good, made, made a good choice to sort of do it now. Especially if I find it, it may well be that I have the freedom to do this now and, 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 and do it. Now I'm happy that the software works. My computer didn't work to start with, but now I'm happy with the, the software works. I've got it all set up. I've got my overlays, very basic overlays, but I've got my overlays set up and things. And I know how it works. I know that this, hopefully the sound's been fine. Um, and it, it's, um, now I know I can do it. Um, if there's an announcement for Old World and I want to talk about it, I might well do it as a stream and get people involved in it rather than just do some kind of reaction video. So I'm, I don't know how I'll use it. That's why I've called it irregular, so I can get away with doing it whenever whenever I feel like it rather than feeling in, in any timed pressure. Um, it's more than likely going to be a, a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday evening, similar kind of time. So it just happens to be when I have the free time to do it. Um, just doing, I won't I won't ever do a Monday because I'll clash with the uh, plastic crack podcast guys um, and while I don't always get a chance to watch it live um, I know there's some people that, that will watch both and we see silly to kind of clash with that but Tuesdays or Thursdays are probably the most likely um, sometimes with a Wednesday being chucked in and the only problem with doing it on a Wednesday night my wife goes to a pub quiz and I uh, solo parent so I can imagine as soon as I try that there'll be a little face through that door telling me they can't sleep or something the joys of, of joys of parenting and it, it, it. yeah definitely check out the end times really really good right anyway i'm just rambling now i know it's in the title but i'm not I'm not giving you anything interesting other than just going on and looking about the chat thank you everyone who's um joined me for the first um stream thank you for everyone who's patient at the beginning and, and, and waited the extra half an hour for me my computer to restart um thank you for everyone who's he was part of the discord and join in and all the friendly chat we have on there if you're not already uh, once this video once this turns into a video there will be a link to the discord on there but in all of my videos now there's a link at least all of the ones i've put out in the last sort of six months there's a link to the disco discord in there as well um, and then you know get involved in the monthly hobby pledge it's really good fun and then again if you are a patron little advert at the end if you are a patron um you are, you can earn dice and i will send them out after a year you earn one per month you complete your pledge and you can set your own pledge so you can completely game it and set yourself the task of basing one miniature a month and you still get uh, 12 dice in the year hopefully no one does that but you could do if you wanted to accrue dice that way but anyway thank you very much for watching um take care and i'll catch you all soon